So I'm going to start with the ladies of Llangollen, who, um, this was a, two young uh, girls from the Anglo-Irish gentry who eloped together in order to escape unwanted marriages and um, effectively their families allowed them to do this terribly shocking thing and they were given a rather small sort of stipend to live on to lead their eccentric lives and this is what they did and they became celebrities and all sorts of famous people would come and visit them in their little cottage in Wales and they were the subject of um, enormous interest and curiosity and they themselves so um, what they would wear is something rather akin to a sort of riding habit in a way um, though in fact uh, people of their class in Ireland, the women did tend to wear that sort of dress in an everyday situation. That, so that in itself wasn't perhaps so remarkable, but their whole appearance was considered to be very deviant, their short hair and so on. The changes in the gender representation in fashion, you know, again, emphasize, I mean, it's a neoclassical aesthetic, but it's also um, extremely feminine. And so this sort of reinforcement of masculine feminine in the 19th century um, is quite significant. But what, what's unchanging throughout the period, and in a way is still down to today, um, is the notion of trousers as representing authority. And of course, as I'm sure you know, um, Amelia Bloomer was just one woman among many in the dress reform societies on both sides of the Atlantic and in Europe in the 19th century to uh, popularize and legitimate trouser dress for women as being more comfortable and healthier and for all sorts of different reasons and also as asserting um, independence. Uh, and of course, to us, this doesn't really even look like trousers at all, but um, these were so shocking at the time that um, many of the women abolitionists, for example, in this country, eventually abandoned trouser dress because they simply couldn't get a hearing. Um, you know, their clothing took, took over so that they couldn't, um, their message couldn't be heard at all. Um, and, um, Later on, this took a different turn with the arrival of the bicycle and education for women. You know, the latter part of the 19th century, trousers were again, um, for women, were very much um, on the agenda. But uh, Lady Harberton, you know, an aristocrat, she'd be sort of turned away from hotels and um, other places if she was wearing this, um, to us, extremely modest uh, trousered garb. So I've now come forward to this early 20th century period um, when again there are groups of independent women, now not necessarily independently wealthy anymore, but independent working women or trying to work women, artists, um, creative figures, and again um, largely though not entirely in Paris. Um, and they are trying to um, work out a way of living lesbianism differently, I think, and um, not exactly being out in a tremendously uh, politically aggressive way, but simply um, a sort of um, performing, if you like, their, their difference from other people. I think in the six, late 60s and the early 70s, I think the idea was that androgyny was a positive, um, a positive role to take, a positive, um, an erotic thing, um, persona to have. Um, but then uh, the work of Joan Nessel and others, there was this retrieval, this um, reappraisal of the working class um, butch and femme roles of the 40s and 50s. This was an event that took place in last year, 2012. Uh, when a group of, of kind of uh, television personalities, really, um, sort of minor celebrities, decided to have this lesbian ball, and they were all very out um, lesbians. And um, uh, Claire Balding, who writes, talks about sport a lot, um, 
she has been quite she has been quite nastily talked about actually for being a lesbian. But anyway, on the whole, um, I think the message the message as intended, the message is a very positive one that now we're out and we're here and we are sort of, we are not stereotypical lesbians, we are, um, uh, you know, we are subverting the norms and yet expressing very visibly and vocally um, our erotic, our erotic um, identities.